Welcome, everyone. Thanks for tuning in again. Today with me is Liene from Latvia. She has done her EVS back in this time, six years ago in Romania, in a hospital. And uh, now she's here to tell a bit about the, her experience. What should she do? So welcome, Liene. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so maybe uh, can you first explain what did you do exactly in your project? We had uh, many parts of my project, but the basic one was working in children's hospital. Uh, actually, we were clinical animators. We were making uh, different kind of balloons, board games, uh, manual things out of paper and different kind of materials. Uh, and we were split into two teams and my team was working in two different sections. Uh, and all together we were, uh, went to psychiatry which was uh, totally different because we couldn't use scissors there and we had to make more, um, more, like, I don't know how to say it, uh, more quiet activities, like, yeah, for those kind of kids. And uh, also, uh, after a few months, we had a project in rural schools. Uh, in Romania, they have... Uh, three different, different kind of uh, kids, at least in school book they wrote it. They have uh, Roma kids, Hungarian kids and Romanian kids. And our task was to bring them together uh, and also make some kind of activities, musical or board games or other kind of games to bring them together and break the ice. Because uh, when we had some breaks, those kids were uh, gathering into groups according to their nationality. And they, they were not playing all together, like mixed. And this was our task to break it. Like the actual system makes them to do it. They, the Hungarians weren't to their own group and spoke in R Hungarian. Romanians uh, went to the second and the Roma kids were also the third group. Interesting. That's uh, I did my EVS in Hungary, uh, and before the interview, we figured out that we have a, a common things because uh, Juliana did your Erasmus uh, or one Erasmus semester in Budapest, and I did my EVS also in Hungary, not in Budapest, but next to the Balaton. But um, from time to time, I was also in some rural schools, and exactly they were the same problem. Like that, Roman kids uh, were not playing with the Hungarian kids, and were a bit. Um, disadvantaged so that's a very uh, important task you did there <laughs> very yes. interesting as far as i know that that uh, our uh, host organization continued this project next years but we were the pioneers so we started this <laughs> yeah <laughs> so as far as i know that yes the project was successful and they continued i'm not sure if it's happening now Uh, because of the COVID, I don't know about volunteering at all. <laughs> and how did you um, come to your project? So what did you do before uh, your EVS and how did, how did you discover uh, this opportunity? Well, I was uh, studying before. Uh, I was at my last year of bachelor uh, and I was not sure what to do next. Uh, I didn't want to go to jobs straight away and start like adult life. <laughs> and uh, my best friend from uh, high school, Uh, did her EVS straight after high school and she went to Spain um, and I remembered that and decided to check what projects are available now so it was spring 2014 and um, project in Cluj Napoca was the only one available now then uh, so I I checked the project, it was in uh, Transylvania, so it sounded like, whoa, Graf Dracula <laughs> and all the mystical stuff around Cluj and Romania in general. Um, and then I checked the description of the project, which was uh, in, in a children's hospital, doing different kind of activities. Uh, so I al also liked the description, so I decided to apply. And in a few weeks, I had a Skype interview with the coordinator from Cluj Napoca, a volunteering center. And this is how I got the project. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> Very successful story. <laughs> And um, what was your first impression when you arrived in Cluj Napoca? Well, I had uh, different impressions. Uh, the positive one and the negative one. <laughs> so the negative one was... Uh, Uh, about the environment uh, in Latvia, it's a bit greener and uh, and uh, and cleaner, so to say. In Romania, I was a bit shocked uh, about littering in the city, uh, and also I was shocked about smoking indoors. 
which was ah oh, crazy. <laughs> um, but the positive part was uh, the city itself. Cluj Napoca is very beautiful with a, a wonderful cultural heritage. So the city center and uh, around it, it was really beautiful and oh amazing. So the city itself was super nice. Hmm. And uh, where did you live? Did you live in Cluj Napoca and maybe with other volunteers? <laughs> Yes, I lived in Cluj Napoca, but uh, we didn't live in the city center, a bit away from the city center. Um, we were eight people together. We had perfect gender balance. We were four boys and four girls uh, from different nationalities. We had three Germans, one Austrian, one Italian, one Spanish, Danish, and Latvian. <laughs> so uh, our organization um, rented a house like half of the house uh, where we all four lived. Uh, we, uh, we lived in a room, like two people together. Uh, and actually, one interesting fact is that we had a house uh, which was on two floors. So after half of the year, we switched the rooms and the roommates <laughs> so that it's equal and like fair, fair for everyone. Because on the second floor, there were two bathrooms, but on the first floor, only one. <laughs> so for a half of the year, four people had to share one bathroom and the others one were yeah, like sharing only for two Good way to do, I think. <laughs> <laughs> And um, for how long did you stay in Romania? I did uh, long-term EVS, so it was uh, actually a full year, mm -hmm. almost. And the others as well, or did they do it? Yes, oh, okay. yes. We all eight arrived at the same time and left at the same time. Well, so it's very, uh, I think, like including and also a good feeling to live for one year with um, people from all over Europe, I guess. <laughs> yes, but we had also different activities. Mm -hmm. We were only four who were working in the hospital. Uh, two were working in a Waldorf school. And uh, the rest, too, were working in the office, actually, because cluj Napoca was a European uh, youth capital in 2015. So those two were working on activities connected with the youth capital. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Very varied actions. That's nice. And uh, what did you like the most about your work? I like the most that we never had a routine. It was always different and we had always some new activities coming in. Uh, in Cluj, I participated in two non-formal education festivals, so to say. Uh, there were around 300 people for one week uh, joining different kind of workshops. For example, theater, shadow theater, um, um, something with music uh, and so on. So like, it was a full week with different kind of activities. And on the last week, we had some flash mobs or, or um, I don't know, like the final concert. <laughs> yeah. And uh, although there were many nice and fun activities, I guess like it's uh, always in life. There were also some things which were not so nice and challenges. Um, What were those challenges in your EVS? At the beginning, we wanted to cook all together, all eight of us. <laughs> But it turned out to be impossible uh, because we had two, uh, two vegetarians, a Spanish guy who wanted to make dinner at 11 in the evening. Then there was me who wanted to eat at 7. <laughs> so we couldn't manage. Also, to buy, buying food for eight people is almost impossible. <laughs> And uh, then calculating and doing all this mathematics, it was impossible. And we, yeah, we decided to like cook for ourselves, each one of us. And also the cleaning part was challenging. Uh, we made a schedule. This is how we solved this problem. Uh, we have different, we split our house in different areas. For example, uh, hallway in the on the first floor, hallway on the second floor, common bathroom, uh, dining room, kitchen. <laughs> and then, then, yeah, we made a schedule who is uh, cleaning which week and which area. So it worked really well. Yeah, but also we had some, some funny issues with the, our um, house owner. Uh, he was really an interesting guy and he liked to party a lot. And uh, I remember it was the last month. It was August uh, and we, we were about to leave. And uh, 
the host organization had an argument or something with the, the owner and he decided to cut off the internet to us. <laughs> so okay. it, it was not our fault, but <laughs> but he cut the internet off for us. So <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Interesting way to do <laughs> Yes, to solve the conflict. <laughs> mm -hmm. And what were the challenges uh, on your work in the hospital? Uh, well, actually, I had only one challenge. Um, I was used to work with my partner, Jamel. He was a Spanish guy, very uh, expressive and social outgoing. And it was easy to work with him. He was the one who was always starting the conversations and breaking the ice. But I'm like very much introvert. <laughs> so it was very hard for me um, when Jamel was sick and I had to go to the hospital alone. So it was always hard to start the conversation and to get over myself. <laughs> But uh, out of this, I learned that uh, I need to prepare double before <laughs> and somehow to trust more in myself that I can also do it by myself. So this was the most challenging part because it's not hard to work with kids, but sometimes the parents are not very welcoming. So <laughs> Yes, yes. Well, that's a very good thing, I, uh, I think, to learn as well. And uh, looking on your EVS, like in general, overall, What are these uh, things you learn from it or you take uh, with you, you took with you uh, to Latvia? Actually, all of it. <laughs> It's so hard to separate something because we learn to live together like so different people and to respect each other's needs uh, and to get over myself in some, to get over some prejudice that I had because also before I went to Romania some of my Latvian friends wanted to stop me for, from going to Romania <laughs> and they were telling me that please don't go to Romania there are so many gypsies and you're gonna get robbed <laughs> but uh, this wasn't my stereotype so I went to Romania and broke all the stereotypes that may, ha may have or may have not been to me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, yes, I can relate to this. It was the same for me uh, going to Hungary for my EVS. Yes. <laughs> and uh, let's imagine now you are at dinner with some friends of you and, um, you know, everyone is telling a funny, a nice story. Which story would you tell? I would tell many stories, so many stories to tell. Um, we were really friendly, an open group, so we had so many events going on so many activities uh, we may we may uh, <laughs> we were making a halloween party then we had pizza parties then we had mo movie nights and so on and also we hosted very many parties <laughs> like gathered together 30 people or something uh, And I would mention also one of the parties when we had like inner party only for eight of us and it was all fun and nice. And then we decided to make a group hug in the bed, but uh, the bed was made for only one person, not for five. <laughs> so at the end we broke the bed. So that was a funny story. At, at the end we had to buy a new one because of course the host organization told us that sorry guys this is your fault please fix it <laughs> well also we made some some nicknames we got the nickname for ourselves uh, because we were really hosting many parties so other volunteers from different cities from Romania called us Kluge Gang <laughs> uh, this was really fun and then we also had some nickname in our group like of eight uh, we had German guy called uh, Alexios And as you know, uh, volunteers get uh, a set amount of money each month. So also we got it and it wasn't that much to like to live in a luxury. So we usually run out of money at the end of the month. But uh, for Alexius, it was different. He was receiving uh, some money from home. So he never ran out of the money. <laughs> <laughs> so we gave him a nickname, Money Boy. Yeah. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> Instead of calling Alexios, please, can you come? We were calling Money Boy, can you come? <laughs> nice, nice one. That's a good story. Yeah. <laughs> And also, I had a roommate uh, for like we were switching after six months. Uh, so the last six months I lived with. Um, No, the first six months I lived with a Danish girl called Malena and she was so nice and so artistic she, that I called her Sunshine. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was her nickname. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I just want to have. And um, what's your favorite song that represents the voluntary? Um, it was hard to think of one song because there are so many different uh, experiences. But uh, as I already told you that we had uh, parties and uh, fun activities and uh, also we as a girls uh, got together more than with boys. So I decided that my song would be girls just want to have fun. <laughs> it somehow represents the bubble we were living in. So it was fun, always happy, always fulfilled <laughs> with joy and happiness. So this is my song because this represents how I felt and how I'm remembering my VS. All right. So I'm going to add it to our um, playlist on Spotify and you can listen it, uh, to it and also to other songs uh, the previous guests uh, mentioned. Since it's uh, very interesting for former and current volunteers uh, what to do after uh, the EVS, what did you do after your EVS? Well, uh, after I came back uh, from EVS, um, I started looking for, looking for a job. Um, and since then I'm working somewhere. <laughs> But uh, currently I am working for a state education development agency of the Republic of Latvia. Um, I am a so-called uh, national contact point for Latvia. And uh, my task is uh, to consult uh, scientific organizations and uh, scientists uh, on three different uh, programs that I'm, yeah, that I'm working with. That sounds very interesting. So that can be an option <laughs> for volunteers and former volunteers. So the last question, um, what does solidarity mean to you? Um, well, for me, <laughs> uh, it rem- uh, I think about solidarity as a as an adult thinking. Uh, so for me, it means uh, a complex of different terms. So uh, it is uh, uh, openness, understanding, respect, and uh, like acceptance. Like all these kind of things together, uh, it's an attitude, so to say, that people may have. Okay, and with this very nice word uh, said by Liene, we're going to end this podcast for today. Next week, it will be again, Josie. Thank you again for joining, uh, Liene. Don't forget to check out our Instagram and Facebook channel and, of course, our Spotify playlist where you can listen to uh, Liene's Girls Just Wanna Have Fun. All right, so thank you for listening. Thank you, Liene, and goodbye. Goodbye.